All right, hello, here we are. X-Men, roll out. <laughs> okay. Got it. He wanted it. He wanted it. He went through slight effort to get it. So when we went on break, uh, Will brought up a thing. You want to uh, watch it during break because he's a bad, bad boy. I just um, wanted you to be prepared, sir. I know. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't need to be prepared. I'm always prepared. Are you prepared? No, um, I'm never prepared. <laughs> no. Uh, <laughs> That's why we went speaking of those who need to prepare that. spells today, do that. I don't actually know if anyone in this party needs to. Oh, I'll no, know. we're all known um, spells rather than. <laughs> I thought so. Yeah. I just. Boo, wizards. And Especially druids. Especially drow wizards. And clerics. Um, so, you wanted to real quickly go to Kava and ask him to scry the clothes of the guy you own, the clothes of, whose name is. Somewhere, do you have it? I have his sister's name. I don't have his name. What's the family name? <laughs> the family name is Antico, or I Itanko. I have it. I T A N I C O is what I wrote. His name is Oku. Oku, and her, mm -hmm. his sister's name is Kono. Yeah, um, that's, I didn't have that. So you can scry him. Uh, what Cavett does is he, he, you know, he uh, has his backpack open, takes out a bunch of very carefully carved crystals. Most of them are kind of like that kind of long, uh, pointy one. Mm -hmm. um, different colors, uh, very deliberately made stands of brass and silver. When uh, they're set up, they actually start making this harmonious noise all through them. It kind of sounds like a synthesizer. So it's like a sound none of you really would have ever sound heard before, and it's a very musical thing. Uh, he takes those clothes and uh, places a large like glass panel in the middle of these crystals, and the panel actually floats ever so slightly. And um, you can see him through the crystal. Uh, he appears to be just doing uh, service. Um, he's leading one of these beetles. He looks like he's on a uh, road. Uh, but unlike a lot of the roads you've traveled through uh, in this area, it's uh, not very tree-lined. You know, most of the roads are deep in this fungal forest around Narashiro. So this mm -hmm. is kind of a little bit more sparse. Okay. Um, I would I would turn to Indira and say, I guess now's the time to go. He seems to be a bit far away. Okay. So, uh, let's go with Team... Uh, well, need, you need team names. We're Team Z. Okay. <laughs> Neil's muted himself, so he's Team Silent. We're Team Gale. Team Gale. Okay, let's start with Team Gale real quick. Um, you guys need to go up to find this theater that uh, Riley can give roughly good enough directions. It's actually in the area that you just kind of left. That sort of uh, part of Narashiro that is... Fine quality, but not noble. This is kind of a common uh, folk for drow, but because of their culture, the common folk live in a level of quality above most other races, right? Um, uh, you head off to this kind of place, and the theatre is not actually exceptionally big, uh, large, or fancy. I mean, it's a theatre, right? It is an indoor theatre, not an outdoor amphitheatre. Um... It's got these outside sort of ticket booth areas where there's a bunch of people outside and what you realize immediately is that the crowd is mostly children and, uh, you know, wet nurses. Probably not these children's mothers, but the nurse who is looking after the children, the nannies, right? Um, Awkward. Yeah, it's it's a bunch of drow children who are waiting for this performance, which according to the uh, name is written up on the little uh, billboard it says the dance of the rainbow dragon um oh. yeah um how sweet hopefully uh so uh if you want to buy a ticket it is a hundred gold each <sighs> do you make that face when you go up to like the ticket booth yes a hundred gold that's insane these must all be noble children, huh? Right, let's have a look, shall we? How much gold do I have? I do have enough. Okay, let's just let's just straight up pay it. <laughs> no shenanigans. Uh no shenanigans? Does does my slave have to pay too? 
Is he going to be inside the theater or is he going to be waiting outside? He's going to be inside, but probably not enjoying. In which case, enjoying. he well, enjoyment or no, still needs a ticket. Oh, I I see. Um. Oh, uh, this this will come out of your uh, your food allowance, you know. I'm warning you because I want to go to this theater. You will be punished for it. Okay, another one hundred gold, was it? Yes, yes. Uh, hands you over like tickets. Um, and you know, has to hand write on the ticket and, and stuff like that. Um, uh, and you are allowed inside. Inside, imagine an old style theater, like movie theater, really. It's kind of got that, you know, reddish uh, carpets all around, little area where food is being sold, which actually, with the price of the ticket, you do get some food for free. Um, I'm trying to think what it would be, because it's not popcorn. <laughs> I ain't got no corn to pop. That'd be good um, for a hundred gold. Holy I imagine God. it really it would be like sugar candy drops, right? Little uh, locusts covered no, in no, no. I was gonna... candied snails. No, drow are still quite prude. Uh, so it's like it's it, you would get a free like paper cup of candy drops of uh, various flavors um, each. But of course, both are handed to Vale. <laughs> and uh, if you want a drink, you can get a drink too. You know, water, ginger beer, root beer. Oh yeah, I love, love a good root beer, actually. Yeah, yeah. It's price included. Helps um, me get fired up. The slave will have a water, though, obviously. <laughs> uh, awesome. Um, immediately, the drow children, like when they're allowed in... They are rushing through. Now, the thing about elven children, specifically drow children, is that they're very... Uh, that kind of childishness is, is, is behind the scenes, you know? Um, so they're all shining children. <laughs> they're all very well behaved, mostly. Yeah, they're almost like there's no childishness to them. But the thing is, when you see that they're getting ready for this performance and they're getting these candy buckets and things, some of that comes out, some of that sort of hype and uh joy um which funnily enough any servants or anyone who's working in the theater is clearly disturbed by seeing children showing joy uh they do not like that uh you get the fe uh, the feeling that uh as is actually kind of the way in most elven cultures children are better seen uh, uh seen and not heard or better yet not seen at all um but even wow. more so with drow Right, yeah. Um, uh, eventually, you'd be ushered into the actual uh, theatre room itself. And that's when we're going to whoosh around the camera to uh, Indira and Riley. Where are you going? I know you want to go to somewhere where you can acquire some beetles. Um, you're really in, like, the lowest of the city right now. And buying that kind of thing would be mostly on the... Um, either outside the city gates or just inside the city gates and of course you, like the city gates are stables. at either the city gates are you know at every tier of the city so it's really what kind of culture you want to bungle yourself I, into. i would probably say like right outside the city gates that way we can store them outside the city like tie them up somewhere where they which won't means be you seen. need to get outside the city gates Right, which means we're going to be having these guys help us since they're so good at getting... When success. you say that, you want to go right outside the city gates, uh, whoever you're, you're talking to, most likely Kava is like, Oh, um, like, yes, but our way out, it, it, it goes quite a ways. You want to get, like, right outside the city? That's we, we can't really, like, super help with that. Like, we can take you all the way to Gulkan's Paradise, but that's, like, quite a way south. Hmm... Yeah. It's like kind of like a cool place if you're into that kind of thing. I like, I'm kind of not. It kind of makes me feel weird. But I think like you don't want to go that far away. Yeah, that's too far away. You have no other way to sneak us out of the city. Uh, well, I mean like this area has like all sorts of like caves. You, you just have to kind of get like lucky or smart. What if I have an idea, Indira? And it might be a bit crazy. You saw how I turned that elemental into a rat? Molly, you're muted. 
Yep, I just muted myself to talk. Yep. Yep. <laughs> um, well, well, perhaps I can turn one of those beetles into a rat or something similar, and then we could just carry it out of there. You have also, yeah, you have also seen beetles inside the city, just, you know, never the huge ones usually. If they are around, they are standing still. They are not lumbering around where people are around, they're in like the marketplace sections. There's, a, there's the big ones, the greater beetles, and the lesser beetles, which are more the size of, you know, a horse. Whereas these ones are like the size of elephants. So We want the size of the elephant one, yeah. if possible. Yeah, yeah. So... so you do see some of them occasionally at marketplaces if you wanted to, you know... Go and yeah, find put, one I'm to... gonna dress up in disguise and and go try to find some big beetles. Then, okay, I'm gonna need an investigation check from you with advantage. And is looking around too. Okay, investigation. It would be disadvantage with me helping. Uh, <laughs> two heads are better than one, in theory. Hey. All right, that's a really good roll, which is why we can immediately, as you're walking out of the uh, the secret slave base, pan the camera to Serena. Oh, um, okay. <laughs> why not, right? Um, yeah, sure. Yours is going to be much quicker because you're yes. going to see uh, their armorer here. This is like a full-on camp that has the, you know, they're making the weapons to prepare for battle. Um, their main blacksmith is a very old drow woman by the name of Felfeeds. Um, Felfeeds. Yeah. Um, she is old. You can kind of see the lines through her body, but a very strong blacksmith still. The hair's kind of bedraggled and hangs down, and it's kind of singed at the ends. Um, and she has this whole blacksmithing setup here that's all been moved to be in here, and a lot of it is much more portable and not ideal setups. She's hammering away at armor, um, and she's wearing what at first you think is some kind of scale mail, but then you realize it's a whole bunch of, like, uh, clay imprints of seemingly some kind of steel over and over, and you realize, oh, that must be, like, the blacksmith guild or, or, or something similar like a certificate of whatever and she's kind of wearing uh these imprints of them all, all, all over her um and she kind of gives a look to you with a with a dour face but sharp eyes like what do you do needs special armor well yes i assumed that those in this city would be would better serve my needs than perhaps those on the surface. I can make honest. armor for you. Excellent. I, mm, what materials do you have access to here? I cannot imagine. That's a leading easy. question. You ask, you tell me what you're looking for, and I'll tell you <laughs> if I have it. I am looking for. Uh, the best form of armor for me would probably be in the half plate style in terms of material ideally something that allows me to move silently I have heard from merchants and such like that Mithril can do that but Mithril well, yeah Mithril is light and easy to wear and uh, almost silent and uh, any kind of armor on the creature like you uh Whatever you quite are, it needs to be light and silent, because otherwise it would make all kind of a clattering noise. Yes, Mithril would be great. I do not have any Mithril. No, if you I could get suspected... me Mithril, I could make you the armor. I had suspected that might be the case, but I presume that Mithril does pass through this city. Uh, it is often brought to the forges by dwarven delegations. It is a dwarven material. If you could acquire me a uh, few ingots of mithril, I could easily make you the armor. Lovely. Another task that is made near impossible by my ability to speak for language. I suppose I will have to make do. Thank you for your time. In the meantime, I you... Uh, could you perhaps, do you have perhaps any spare armor? I need to get into the practice back of wearing yeah, it. Yeah, you, can, you can wear like some armor scraps to get 
back into the practice for whatever yeah. you're scheming over there. I'm, I'm um, sort of imagining that Serena in the past would have had some degree of cleric training, but sort of neglected it a bit. And um, that's sort of well, uh, yeah, picking back up on that. More or less. <laughs> okay. And then we swoosh all the way back. To you're done. You're done, Serena. That's your, your lot. You, yeah. You're like, oh, can I get? No. Maybe well, later. Thank you, thank no. you for Happy giving Christmas. me something. I was expecting to sit here for the remaining two hours doing I nothing. I know, right? So. I'm <laughs> I appreciate uh, it, Ollie. Let's go back to Team Gale. And you get into the um, actual theatre room. And it's uh, not, not huge, right? You've probably been to bigger theatres in other cities. Um, but it's one of those ones with a slope and all the chairs. Um... Uh, an area kind of behind a lot of you that is clearly locked off. If you, you you see stairwells that go up there that have the sort of velvet um, truss in front of it and uh, an attendant standing there to make sure no one enters. Uh, a whole bunch of uh, drow children's uh, getting and setting up in their positions um, while right now the uh, curtains are down over the stage but occasionally you hear a little bit of music as you know the the musicians prepare and kind of ready their uh stuff so you gotta you know a little bit of time before the actual performance itself starts so um we're going to try and nab an autograph right well i i'm I don't think they'll let a slayer do that. Right, no, that's fine. So, um, the plan is we wait for the, the theatre to start, yes? Yes. And then we go to the toilet together because you wipe for me, obviously. Why would I sully my hands doing that, you know? Right. Right. Just a no brainer. Yeah. Um, and then you cast invisibility on one of us, probably you. I mean, it might be better on me, but like, you know, we're feeling out the story, you know. We've got I, to think I, about... <laughs> I am seeing Gilwin's face in real time. <laughs> We've got to think about how this, this feels. And then whoever is invisible oh, goes... I don't have invisibility. What? I don't know that spell. Gilwin. <laughs> okay. Okay. Look, okay. Riley's better than me. No, no, she isn't. No, she's just different. She's no, just got she different. She's got different talents, right. like turning into a T Rex. But you can like sing and and make people feel really good, or, or like. Uh... Hey, I've seen her firsthand. I've watched her make someone feel really good. <laughs> right. Yes, but um, you you stopped me from bleeding to death. She hasn't done that. I'm a I'm a walking bandage. That's great. Yeah, but uh, it's it's more like. Um, a sling for a broken arm because like i need to have you around for a long time because you you make me make me heal properly right okay so we go to the loo yes. we go to the loo and then we need to go to wherever this autograph would be however where is the autograph that is the problem well, Could it, you locate it? Uh, if I knew what it looked like or I've seen it before. Great. I can locate it. So, so the autograph, like, uh, with, with the theory is Tanuma has left an autograph or some sort of memorabilia trinket for her favorite actor or actress. We need to find that. Huh. So we need to find an excuse to excuse ourselves during the middle of the theatre. We need to go to the loo. Okay, I don't think anyone will ask where we're going. Right. <laughs> okay, right. If they don't ask, then we just we just walk out and head towards the toilets. But then we need to veer off towards the actors' rooms. 
unless they have one big common room. I doubt it. Okay. Uh, and then, and then, and then we simply walk through and we find uh, an autograph from her. It should be easy enough. Is this, could we not just, she's here tonight. Probably not. Apparently she's not shown up recently. And given the state of alarm, I very much doubt yeah. that she would show up. If she does, sure, we can take her head and bring that back. You can probably locate her with that, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that would be easy enough. <laughs> On the other hand, scarring all of these children with a public beheading is arguably not particularly moral. Oh, you just throw a cloth over it. It looks like magic. <laughs> 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 So we're down with that plan, yes? We we, we we go out to the loo and then we muddle through. Yeah, muddle is our opposite. Right, right. It, it, this, the super, the secret backup plan, the ultimate backup plan, we are involved in a sordid slave and and uh, and master relationship and, and, and we have to hide it. And they will obviously hide it as well because it is, oh, you know, uh, Goddess forbid. Why am I always... Why am I always the sexual slave in these scenarios? No, no, we like we like in a relationship as equals. Oh, but, okay. But you're my slave. Uh, and it, it, you know, it would be really good in like theatre because it sort of shows like us overcoming this. I'm equals... We're equals, but I'm your slave. Equals in the relationship, yeah. So we started off like a slave and master, and then slowly over time, we sort of, you know, connect. You sure? Aren't you the bard? Can you not tell what sort of gold this is? <laughs> did you just assume I had invisibility? Yes, I did. Sorry. <laughs> it's uh, at this time the lights go down in, in the room. <laughs> uh, and there's a swell of uh, music and it's really upbeat and cheery. It's kids music. This is a, a performance for children. Um, and the uh, stage opens uh, showing this really extravagant costume uh the person under it is really hard to see of uh there's almost this like frayed fabric that trails over and over and over making it look like this really fluffy multicolored dragon like person right um and the crowd of, of children are cheering and and loving it as this music happens and you know it starts this very big uh, kind of um, over the top sort of dance sort of thing um, exactly as you would have expected and the other uh, performers uh, usually they're, they're actually kind of on their knees and kind of acting out almost like the motion is more of a scene than the performer is it's very strange um, that part um, I, I imagine you guys are going to sneak off once the start of gets full yes. swing Okay. Excuse me, I'm just, just going to the loo. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, like, valet standing there is like... He has to wipe for me. <laughs> Do not need that information. Uh, it's, uh... <laughs> and you can kind of get, you know, behind scenes in the, um... In the, the, the <laughs> lobby. Let's all go to the lobby. Uh, you can kind of hear the music through the walls. Um, the way to the water closets is quite well uh, signed to Gilwyn, who can read the Undercommon. <laughs> so, uh, which way to the um, the act actors' rooms? Ollie, point my finger in the direction. Well, you need to figure that out because that's not signposted. 
Uh, so I'm gonna need you to give me. Uh, let's say a, I actually I was thinking I wanted to give you a performance check uh, for the knowledge of these kind of theaters. So let's go with a performance check. Ah, right, that's it cool, has to be yeah. behind this stage because you would know the layout of this kind of structure, and it's yeah you, you would be because it has to be behind the stage. It would be below, so the the way that's blocked off, although there's no one actually standing there blocking off right now, is probably up to where Tanuma and other rich people would get the fancy seats. But you can find the ways it's kind of not signposted, you have to go down some other corridors uh, to get to uh, the areas behind the stage and where the performers um, uh, rest. There's kind of like a wall of shelves of costume items, the music is, is quite loud here because you're kind of getting uh, almost the back of it, right? Um, there's all the wooden, or not wooden, all of the stone painted and paper, uh, a lot of paper backdrops painted up that are kind of scrolled across the back of the, um, stage, and, uh, lanterns, and all the things they need. You could quite quickly find your way to what would be the dressing room for the head of this performance, to the lead actor or actress, um, which is locked. But there's no one back here right now. There are a couple of people who are looking, who are back here, but looking at the stage, who are uh, extras and stagehands, right? They're not really paying attention to you. They're yeah, that's why I can. He pulls out the. Uh, uh, pop, pop that was that. a very wet lock, apparently. Yeah, well, when you want it to be quiet, you uh, you, you get lube your tongue up. right in there and lick the mechanism. He picked it with a pepper army. You gotta lube it up. <laughs> Go ahead. Yep, easy enough. It's actually like an amateur lock. Really quite effortless for someone like you to open and open quietly and then sneak the two of you in into a, uh, I mean, it, it is a lead actor's dressing room, right? Comfortable chairs, their clothes when they're not in costume, uh, their bag. Uh, things like that. Quite a large, like, leather handbag type thing. You'll check the handbag. Uh, and presumably they'd have, like, a mirror or some sort of prep area where mirror, they might apply their fanciful mirror, makeup. Basically, yeah, like a makeup dresser thing that I can't remember the name of. And then, like, a table with, like, some food and... Uh, can I... Something. Vanity. <laughs> can I Can I check One that for, like... Yeah autograph for like memorabilia from Tanuma something. Investigation checks, you two. Here's where the ones come in. Yeah, I know, right? We've been both abysmal oh, investigation. I'm, I'm looking that. <laughs> yes, fuck it, Gilwin. I'm... Do it! Rummaging through the handbag. Oh, fuck <laughs> Now you can take the nine. <laughs> you can't. You gotta take the new roll. We're lucky no, you choose. don't. Not for luck. You can choose. Yeah, lucky. Oh, really? You choose. Is that everything? Is yeah, that the everything else is lucky. lucky. I'll take no, that yeah, lucky is the. You have to take the new one. Uh, you uh, neither of you find anything. You kind of upturn this thing. Okay, you find things. There's actually quite fine, you know, uh, little hand mirrors and uh, high quality makeups and uh, perfumes and things and uh, little brooches. But uh, nothing that would lead you to believe it would be from Tanuma. Shit. Fuck. Uh, <laughs> they're like pockets of like hand mirror that looks expensive. <laughs> uh, what now? Uh, it, the play was pretty good. I said we just go back. And you watch. hear a large clapping and. <laughs> Take the handbag and let's just check the seats where Tanuma likes to sit upstairs. Now you can hear uh, sort of like uh, in, in Elvish, like, oh, that was great, but remember, you've got to be back in a, in a few they're minutes. Coming, they're coming. Either side of the door, my friend. No worries. Stealth rolls. <laughs> he, like. With a hand, with he, a handbag, he, like. <laughs> Bale, Bale would point at the side of the door that the door will open. Yeah. Uh, and then he will dive into like a set of costumes. Uh, the thing is, is that like this is a drow structure, oh, so everything's really short and he's really tall. 
I like to think there's a bunch of boxes with wigs on, and Vale just puts his head in between them. <laughs> the the, the uh, lead actress comes in. It, it, she's the one with the who is the dragon. Takes the dragon head off. Kind of like, <gasps> and it's Tanuma. No. <laughs> dun dun dun. <laughs> um, and then kind of looks directly at Vale. Like holding the dragon head, and then like looks at Gilwyn, <laughs> and is uh, she's just a little confused in that in that brief moment. Uh, hello, uh, I'm a really big fan. Oh, oh, yeah. they're meant to tell me when the um, special needs visits are, are are coming. No, you're meant to wait until after the performance to come back here. Oh, uh. Yeah, You're missing I'm... out. This is the—they're currently singing the, the the song of the Green Glades. That's really cool. But uh, like, um, I I always said to Jeffrey here that you're my favorite. <laughs> that is the logical correct choice. Yes. Um, and I couldn't wait. And Jeffrey said we shouldn't come back here, but I insisted, and I'm. I'm sorry, um, and I, I told him to take your bag, and I'm really sorry. A deception check. Wasn't come back. <laughs> oh, God, let's hope this goes well. <laughs> <laughs> well, then, give that back to me. Uh, snatches it from Jeffrey. Um, and we'll kind of fiddle through it, make sure nothing got stolen from it. Luckily, you stole from the dresser. So, uh, uh, and she kind of puts it on the, the vanity, uh, and we'll, um, kind of lean back against it. Um, so, um, autograph, right? You'd want, you want some of those? Yeah? Yes, please. That would be really cool, actually. Yeah. Uh, one even for your, um, yeah. No, he definitely wants one, yeah. Uh, you are so kind. Well, you know how it is. No. He he's a bit. Uh, mother always said that I was the clever one out of the two of us. Oh, you're related. No, no. He has just been my slave since I was really little. Oh, yeah. The old yeah. Yeah, he was like... Uh, as, as is typical. Yeah, yeah, he was like my first pet. He's not too hard on the eyes, so I could see him being an enjoyable pet. You know, keep you warm in the, uh, the cold season, stuff like that. Yeah, sometimes I like sometimes I like to wear him like a blanket. Mm -hmm. he's, he's quite tall. He's quite so big. He's, he's very large. What are you feeding him? Yeah, he's good for that. I, I don't know. Mother feeds him. I, I always forgot. Well, yeah, you see, I, I, I'm sorry. I forget that you're just a you're little... Um, like You've grown quite big, but you're still young. Yeah? This must be... This is your big adult person talk. That's okay. Uh, do you... um, You come back about... After the performance, we can, we can, talk, we can bring other people. We can show you the puppets. Um, we can have you... Give you a little bit of a tour. Cool. That, that would be cool. Um, mother said that, um, she, uh, didn't like someone who came here. She said that, uh, the Tanuma lady was always sticking her nose in her business and that she used to be the best before That does then. not sound like Tanuma. She's actually very, she doesn't put her nose in anyone's business, really. No, neither does mother. She's always down in her workshop. But she doesn't seem to like this lady. She talks about her a lot. Ah, uh, give me a deception check. <laughs> Tanil's trying to ride off that 20 real hard. Oh. Yes. Well, I think it's time for you two to leave. I need to be back on stage in a in in a in a moment. So you two, come on out. Um you can come back after the performance. This will be fine, yeah? Thank you, ma'am. Can I insight? Because, like, that was a quite quick change. Yeah. <laughs> Can I just start crying? Because I'd kind of. <laughs> that would be a, another <laughs> performance check. God damn, I had to get five. 
You just start crying, and her eye- Like I said, they aren't expected to deal with children's emotions. And her eyes widen. She backs out of the room, kind of like, grabs one of the stagehands, and is like, You deal with this! And kind of takes the head, and sticks it back on, and, and you're dealt with like a, a quite spooked young stagehand who's like, Oh, oh no, I'm sorry, um... Uh, she's just very busy right now. Was it was it her taking off the head? Was that too, was that what spooked you? Vale uh, raises his arms for a hug. And she was coming to give one of those like kind of half hugs, even though Kaylin's crying. Uh, well, as soon as she comes into hug range, uh, Vale switches the grip to uh, a, a chokehold. Oh! <laughs> and just oh my god! The door's he still open. He doesn't. But there's no her. one there. I he doesn't kill her. He just he knocks that. her out. Give me and then a. The door. Give me an athletics check for that. One. <laughs> oh god. Or, yeah. What is going on? This is the worst plan we've ever had. Yes! <laughs> we model for it! Oh, oh no, it. it's okay. See, it's just a fake. It's just a fake. <laughs> and this woman is just like unconscious in your arms now. This is like Hitman. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he, he just closes the door and then puts her behind some of the costumes. Okay. And with, with that, <laughs> we're gonna swipe the camera to these two. Okay. We have a name. It's Team Z. I forgot <laughs> Team Z. Sorry. Did you roll an investigation check yet, or did I make you do that until I, after? I did roll investigation, I think. Let's scroll up. Yeah, I think you did too, but I'm garbage, and also this is going on. This, no. this, this broke no my brain. Uh, you didn't 19. Roll it yet. I rolled a 19. Where? If you just scroll up, you'll see it. I it was with advantage. Oh, yep, I see it, I see it, I see okay, it. Okay, 19 is great. Okay. So you can go up to, um, actually kind of the marketplace that you actually entered the city by, right? Because a lot of the time you'd be spending in the, the sort of south side of the city, because you already caused trouble in, in the north of the kingdom, right? So you came mm -hmm. down to the south, where there's this big marketplace. This is where you saw that mind flayer drifting around, and it's just about the same sort of, you know, you're getting at, like, basically this middle of the day, a big swell of business. So the marketplace is actually quite busy, which is both good and bad for the kind of thing you're trying to do. And luckily mm -hmm. for you, there is one of the great servant beetles uh, there. It's standing right by the side uh, of... Um, uh, a company that is basically, uh, they've finished unloading the boxes and things from it, and those boxes are going to be brought to other places in the city, right? Um, there's actually a dwarf, and dwarves always stand out here because they're just big and burly and just... Like, lifting and, uh, hauling all the crates while, um... A uh, fairly young drow, probably a hundred years old, is kind of like standing by the beetle. While the beetle is... They're very obedient creatures. They don't really do much when they're not being told to, to go anywhere. Um, it While you're kind of like watching it from far, it kind of like snaps its mandibles together. And uh, it's like, oh, uh, we need to get some food for this thing. They don't have a feeding thing here. I should probably take it outside. Like, no, don't take it outside yet. We're gonna need it in a moment. More boxes gonna come over. We feed it when it's on the way. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. It's like, where's it? It's, look, it's looking slightly kind of hungry. Like, it doesn't look like anything. It's a beetle. It'll be fine. Um, um, I I look over at Indira and I kind of whisper. I'm like, we have options to get that beetle. What what, what are you thinking? Love the rat plan. I do too, but I can't just do that in front of them because they'll know. I got this. You gonna, you gonna make a distraction? We, we can even lure the beetle away with food. What do these beetles eat? You've actually seen this? Um, when you were at that abandoned farm, there was this kind of spinning machine, like a trough. It's like two troughs that went... Yeah. You didn't see really what was inside it, but that seemed to be some kind of feat, and it clearly doesn't have one of those here. Mm. What can you tell me about these two real fast, Ollie? Sorry, I was adding that quote that made Ian laugh. Um, uh, seems to be a merchant dwarf, 
Most of the ones that are in the city are. Uh, and the drow is just young. That's what you see from here, is a young male um, around Vale's age. Male Vale. Um, okay. He's the one, like, the the, dra the the dwarf is kind of, like, standing at, like, kind of an area where, but basically a stockpile, you know, pallets and things. Um, the kid is behind him, and he's kind of got the reins to the beetle in one hand. In okay. one hand? In one hand. Um, <laughs> kind of not, like, he's kind of, like, keeps going between looking out into the marketplace and looking at the beetle. You know, he's kind of antsy. Okay. Um, I'm going to walk up in front of that one that has the reins mm -hmm. and, uh, and trip over myself and fall just in front of him and kind of into him. Can you give me a performance check, please? Okay. <laughs> Oh no! No, that's really Ooh. good. Yeah, you do that, and he kind of like instinctively reaches out and catches you, and immediately blushes, which is always—I don't think you've ever seen a, a dark elf blush properly. It kind of like almost gets bluish, kind of a blue purple on their cheeks, uh, okay. and he's kind of like just holding you, like kind of uh, like swoon style for a few moments mm -hmm. before work out what okay. to do. Uh, yeah, and she'll be like, "Oh, my hero." Oh, well, yes, you're lucky that I was here, and kind of, like, sets you back up, right? But, like, keeps his arms on your, uh, his hands on your arms. I'm gonna, like, bat my eyelashes at him and be like, Quiet. What have you got here? Oh, I just help, um, loading and loading. I, I, uh, I consider myself a little bit of a rider, you know? I ride these things. I do, I, I do quite well, yeah. Seeing as you saved me. Um, I guess I owe you a favor. Yeah, 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 you do, yeah. You're quite a beautiful woman, if I don't mind, uh, if you don't mind me saying uh, oh, that. Oh, stop, stop. Uh, the beer's around here anywhere, ale. Oh, yeah, there's a, um, you know what, let me take, show you. I, I actually quite like this place over here and kind of start Please, leading you off that. let me purchase you and your comrade a beer. Don't let him hear that. He'll get you to buy two. <laughs> you know how dwarves are. Two it is. We'll uh, lead you off uh, towards this little merchant tavern. The dwarf, it doesn't seem to notice. It's like, boy, I need, uh, need you to get me the red sugar bag. Boy! And gets like a little confused. Because by the time you, you're, you're off <laughs> by the time he's noticed. Yep. I'd come walking up to the guy dressed in the outfit of the guy who like owns the Beatles, yeah. and I'm gonna say, "What what are you what are you doing here? What are you doing here? I deal with these Beatles, and you're not taking care of this one very well." Can you give me the deception check, please? Yes. This is the character check, character actor check. It's. Uh, I had a. I, my. I had a boy here who was dealing with it. He's not. He's not tied up. He's. He's under well, he the bed. I, I. 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 I told the boy to feed him. Well, where's uh, the boy? Well, I don't know. You know, a uh, 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 boy. <laughs> but, uh, you need to go I mean, find him. I will watch the beetle. Oh, sickens me. Probably, boy. Gets lost in the sea of drow <laughs> in the marketplace. I wait for him to get lost in the sea of drow at the marketplace, and then <laughs> I just kind of like go under the beetle. Uh, first, I try to gain its trust a little bit. Give an animal handling roll. You want to risk that one? Okay. Uh, yeah, but just a little bit. Like I want it to. Boy. It doesn't seem to care much about your presence. You okay. kind of, you know, pat it on the side, and it kind of, like, clicks its, and twists its head a little bit. Um, Absolutely. Um, while I'm doing that, after I notice it, it isn't, like, afraid of me. No. I'm going to polymorph into a crab. It does get to make a wisdom save, you throw. It does get a wisdom save. Rolls a four. So yeah, how wise is a beetle, honestly? <laughs> 
Well, actually, wild animals are usually yeah, positive. Yeah, natural creature, uh, creatures are more like. But this is kind of like a domesticated creature as well, so it's not as wise as some others. It just <laughs> into a crab, like it drops into your arm, uh, into your hands. Now, here's a question. Does it yep. affect the clothing as well? Yes, anything it's wearing becomes Okay, a good, because it. It, it had the full saddle. Because oh, these awesome. things are basically carriages. Like, this one is clearly used for transporting goods. But it still has, you know, place for two people to sit there. And all the stuff um, put are, are both above and below it. So now it's just a crab. Quickly pick up the crab by its back so it doesn't pinch me. And just, like, throw it into my pack. Close the pack up. And try to walk away nonchalantly as if nothing happened. Give me a another deception roll. Sure. Yeah, like, there's some people you, you hear is like, wasn't there a beetle there, like, a moment ago? <laughs> like, you're just due to a mixture of luck and a mixture of you just blending in, uh, people definitely notice that something happened, but they'd have no idea that you are the person yeah. that turned okay. that beetle into a crab and snuck away. Um, a okay. And you two can uh, meet back up in a moment. I mean, you saw where Indira went off to. Um, yep. to one of the merchant taverns around here. So, we can move over to the other end. That's you're like, efficiency, people. You're like, ah, oh, job you done. It. Job done. No shenanigans. We wipe no shenanigans. over to Vail. Get it done. They're like to Vail choking out us. <laughs> one of the stagehands. Uh, you're in the, the, the dressing room. Close the door. No one's seen. No one knows. Music's playing back. Uh, really cheerful children's music is playing through the building. Okay, okay, that did that didn't work. Plan B, we got. Did you need to choke this person? Well, uh, maybe. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> well, now we can leave. We could have left. She wanted us to. They wanted us to leave. Yeah. Um. It's not like they were keeping us in here. Old habits die hard, you know? Come on, anyway, let, let us, plan B, let's sneak up to the chair upstairs. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I want, if one of the chairs has got to be hers, and we, we just have to inspect them very closely. She's bound to have left a stray hair or something. That would do, right? It belongs to her. It's very personal. No one else has hair like her hair. Ooh, that might work. That, that might work. work. Better than this. <laughs> he points at like <laughs> the drought body in the corner of the room, under some under some like uh, a coat or something. <laughs> yeah. I'll also be quick to point out that it's very generous of you to say that that's Plan B. It's more like Plan Q. Okay, fine, whatever. We muddled through. That is the plan. Let's go. I'm gonna need you to give me <laughs> stealth checks. I'll pat the stage hand's head and be like, sorry. <laughs> They were such nice people. <laughs> oh, for fuck's sake. I'm gone. I'm a ninja. I'm looking it. Oh! Come on. I believe. Yes. Hey! Okay. <laughs> That's really nice. So, uh, you guys sneak out. Uh, Gilwyn kind of lags a little bit behind, being a bit more careful. Uh, a little less dexterous, graceful. Many words could be used here. Um, uh, but you managed to, to sneak out because everyone's just too distracted by the performance. If any children were to see you, they wouldn't they wouldn't see you. If listening, watching, you know, uh, and you manage to kind of like pause and wait for there to be no valets looking and you can dash across the lobby <laughs> to the stairwells to go upstairs <laughs> and sneak up there because there's no one guarding there right now. And there's just a little booth with a couple of chairs. Um... And you can hide up there. Well, you can also see a really good view of the stage. Um, and all the, the people, uh, all the Jow Trojans, was like, yeah, we're yeah, like really, really loving it. And there's, a, there's the dragon dancing away. <laughs> we met Drag her. We met her. <laughs> We've got the autograph. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> yes, very carefully. For, for a hair. Okay. Something like that. A uh, hair. Investigation checks. Do better this time. Wait. Can I inspire Mel first? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> How? 
Uh, we just met her. That was inspiring. <laughs> sure. Good enough. I'll allow it. This is pathetic. Is it? Is it a D8? Yeah. Come on. Come on. Okay. You go and you <laughs> trundle around the bottom with eyes. Oh, gross. There's old candy down here. There's kind of melted up. It's sticky down here. And you find. A silver strand of hair. Perfect. Um, and it, the thing also of note is that this booth does say, uh, or above this chair that you're looking at, it does actually have to Numi Bieris, a uh, steam patron, engraved on it. So it's almost definitely her hair. Phil's gonna. Um... And you know what? Give you extra even further. It kind of smells of like oil and machinery. Wow, that's a. She must really stank of that stuff. Like also the one good. hair, it's like, oh, look, he's he's giving us. I'm he's giving you the thing no, that is actually I'm the right not. hair. Um, a very thick bone here. Neil. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't Should know that's work. how it worked. I didn't know Nail, it went by the thickness of the bone. <laughs> Nail will very carefully pop that in a vial. Pop that in his back. CSI Narashiro. Oh. Wait, wait, this is getting good. Oh, uh, yes, but the, yes, yes, yes. Come on, let's go. <laughs> It was um, a good show, though. We should come back. Are you going to sneak out? Are you going to walk out like you belong? What's the plan? Walk out like we belong. Men in black style. Deception checks. <laughs> oh, no. We should have snuck out. <laughs> well, he's, I think he's better at deceiving than Steve. <laughs> yes, but I'm a lot worse. At... Oh, boy. Ooh. <laughs> I'm wrong. I'm better. You were. <laughs> Last you were... luck. Walk. Last luck. Thank you. I'm doing it. I'm I was gonna my... say, do you want to use that last luck? Uh, up here? All yeah. of my looks for the day. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is the true meaning of the muddle through plan. Oh, hey. it's pretty good. It's pretty good. There's definitely, you know, you walk out of here as one of the valets is walking up. Uh, and he just, you, you kind of. Just carry yourselves correctly that he just kind of steps out of the way. And is, you know, there's a bit of a questioning look, but you're quickly enough out that he doesn't actually go, hey, wait, wait a minute, you know, and you can get out of the theatre, back onto the streets. Job done. Mission, Heist complete. Mission <laughs> successful. Reputation no gained. Okay. We did uh, it. It's definitely with a silent that, assassin rating. We can. <laughs> uh, we just didn't end up wearing anyone's clothes. We can. Uh, we'll be back in a few moments. See you later.